Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Listen, uh, if any of you don't know about it, there's a small business administration, the SBA. Um, I forget what exactly what it's called, but if you uh, go to their website, the COVID-19 economic stimulus something or other, let me find out exactly what it is. Uh, okay, it's the SBA.gov. Uh, says coronavirus COVID-19 small business guidance loan resources uh, you apply for a loan if you've got a business if you don't have a business you could be an independent contractor and even if you don't have a business and you're not an independent contractor they have a thing for uh, you don't have to take the loan but they have a thousand dollar grant I know five people that have gotten the thousand dollar grant personally so and uh, take the money and run Steve Miller woo, woo, woo. oh take the money and run uh, but yeah uh, yeah you know when the you have me singing it in the in a church choir uh, it's called making a, a joyful noise unto the Lord but uh, the thing is get the money buy what you need now because the government's just printing money and uh, before you know it a candy bar is going to cost uh, 10 10 or 15 dollars mark my words uh, they were a nickel when I was a kid now they're what a dollar fifty two dollars I don't know but uh, look for the COVID-19 small business guidance loan resources and uh, if you really really can't find it Send me a comment. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the exact uh, page of where it's at. And uh, took me, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to fill out the whole thing. And within about a week, I got the money. I was like shocked. I just found out I got the money today. Um, and um, I'm trying to start a business. So, yeah. All right. Uh, but enough of that. This Bible study is going to be called Peace and Safety. Turn your Bibles, King James, I hope. Geneva's okay too. Webster oh, is okay too. So when people say, Are you King James only? No, I'm not. I also like the Geneva and I also like the Webster Bible. Yeah, the dictionary guy. He he did a Bible. Uh, he took the archaic words like uh, when Joseph said that uh, he saw the kine, K-I-N-E, which is an, an Old English or Middle English word for cattle, cattle. He updated it to cattle or cow. But, uh, you know, it just never caught on. Webster was a true scholar and a believer. Uh, contrast that with the uh, heretics that you have today. All right, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to go back to this. So I'm just going to go a little bit. And you know what kills me is people will say that Paul is a false apostle. This is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, what's wrong with you people? If Paul was a false apostle, that means the second book of Peter is wrong because it calls him a brother, a brother in the faith. Okay? And the book of Acts would be wrong. I mean, really? You're going to tell me the book of Acts is wrong? And then when Paul met everybody that the Holy Spirit failed to tell them, oh, hey, look out for this Paul guy. He's a false apostle. I mean, really? You believe that stuff? I, you know, I just don't get it. But Paul writes to the Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 1. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, 
peace and safety. For when they, not us, for when they, the unbelievers, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So peace and safety, when they say it, uh, sudden destruction is going to come upon them. All right. All right, I'm just doing the introduction right now, so bear with me. Let's go to Daniel chapter 8. Uh, we're going to start reading in verse 23. And in the latter time, what is latter time? The end times, right? Uh, just remember, every day we live is a day closer to the latter days or the end times. Of course, they've been saying that for, I don't know, 1900 years they've been saying this. But, uh, well, yeah, we'll see. And in the latter time of their kingdom, their kingdom, not our kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Remember when you're in a court and the judge pronounces judgment upon you? It's called a sentence. So it's the latter time of their kingdom. Their transgressions or wickedness are come to a full. A king of fierce countenance. What is countenance? A look. Uh, their complexion. Their how they look. A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty but not by his own power. Ah, see, this ties in to the book of Revelation. Let's, let's take a look there real quick. Well, I don't know. I, I believe it ties into Revelation chapter 13 and verse 4. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I think Daniel is one of the most difficult books to understand in the Bible. Uh, that's my opinion. I, I feel like uh, Daniel, to me, is the book I understand the least. Uh, I, it's just, it's a hard, to me, it's a hard book. Uh, probably the hardest. But I think it ties in with this. That's my opinion. Revelation 13, 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Isn't that what we just read uh, in Daniel? We're going to go back there. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Huh, good question. So let's go back to Daniel 8 and verse 24. Um, so a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Huh, where have I read that before? Well, I think Revelation chapter 13, verses uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8, uh, refers to this. Revelation 13, verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him, power was given unto him, to continue forty and two months, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. 
and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Ah, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Back to Daniel 8. Uh, verse 24, And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft, craft. If you ever hear somebody talking about, oh, do you practice the craft? Well, that's a, uh, the Masonic Lodge, they talk about the craft. But also, perhaps you've heard of the Wiccans or witches, as in witchcraft. So a lot of times, Satanists and what have you, they call what they do the craft. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace and by peace shall destroy many didn't we just read about uh, and when they shall say peace and safety oh yeah and by peace shall destroy many and he shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand Who's the Prince of Princes, King of Kings, Lord of Lords? Hmm. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Therefore thou shut up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Daniel fainted and was sick of what he had seen. And I truly believe this is the Great Tribulation period, what they call the Great Tribulation. And the modern church world doesn't even think that they're going to be here for this. They, they, you know, I would love to be wrong, people. I want to be wrong. I want the pre-tribbers to point the finger at me and say, nah, 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 nah. You were, you're an idiot, Bob. You were wrong. And I'll, I'll hang my head in shame and say, yep, I sure was. But I doubt it. I doubt it. They don't know who Israel is. They think the antichrists that deny the Lord Jesus Christ are God's chosen people. And they think the, those that have trusted in the shed blood death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they think the people that are in Christ are just a bunch of Gentiles grafted into this antichrist tree. Really, I think the Christians are God's chosen people and they think the antichrists are God's chosen people and they call that rightly dividing the word of truth and tell me that I'm teaching heresies. Okay, yeah, all right. Well, I guess daytime is night and nighttime's day. Light for darkness and darkness for light. I, I don't know. Shoo. You know, in Daniel 12, 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time, and at the time thy people shall be delivered, every one that is found written in the book. Let me tell you something, people. The Assyrian em uh, Empire invading northern Israel was no cakewalk. The Babylonians, when they came in and destroyed Jerusalem, uh, from what I understand, 
they killed at least, from what I understand, I could be wrong, it's just my understanding, they killed a third of the people out of hand and then took the rest into captivity to be slaves. That was no cakewalk either. But the time at the end is going to be even worse than any of those times. In Matthew 24, the disciples came to Jesus privately and says, tell us, what are things going to be like, you know, towards the end times, when you come back? Well, Matthew 24, verse 21, Jesus said, For then shall be great tribulation, trouble, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And you know what kills me is churchgoers don't think they're the elect. They think the Antichrists are the elect. Really? Really, the, the antichrists that curse the name of Jesus are God's elect. Really? Okay, if you say so, buddy boy. All right, let's take a look at uh, the devil's method of operation, his MO. Turn to Genesis chapter 3. And those of you that listen to me for ranting and raving over a long period of time. You've probably heard this at least a half a dozen times, but, uh, you know, what can I tell you? It's like, uh, like I learned in college, regular college, secular college. When the uh, instructor, professor, teacher, whatever, mentioned the same thing more than once, pay attention. Pay attention. It's going to be on the test. I was always a good test taker. I never considered myself a bookworm, but uh, I did like to read. Of course, looking at the wasteland uh, that television is, I, I can understand why I like to read. All right, Genesis 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent. Now if you think the serpent is a talking snake, you got a problem. I mean, you got a big problem. If you think the serpent was a talking snake, you know, uh, that's why they all these Bible, children's Bible things, they got a snake hanging from a tree with an apple there, and Adam and Eve with their little fig leaves covering their private parts. Or if they do show the devil, he's got horns and a pitchfork and a, and a tail, and he's all red. Uh, that's not, that's, that's what they want you to think. That is exactly what they want you to think. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9, it says, And the great dragon, a figure of speech, people, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Dragon, serpent, figures of speech. Why is he called that old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long, long time. Back to Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, the serpent, said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? What's the first words out of the serpent's mouth? He's questioning God's word. You know, God is a loving father trying to protect his children. Now, I don't know how many of you have been parents, but you remember when you were little kids? It's kind of hard to do when you're old like me, but, uh, you know. Now, kids, when you get ready to cross that street, look both ways. Make sure there's no cars coming. 
Is God, uh, you know, is is your parents trying to be God and 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 keep you from enjoying yourself, or is he? Are they trying to protect you? Well, that's what God the Father does. He loves us. He wants to protect us. He says, "Stay away from that serpent. Stay away from that tree in the garden." And the woman said unto the serpent. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Stay away from that thing. It's, it's, it's deadly, people. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ah, don't listen to that guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he's trying to hold you down. He's trying to... The man's trying to hold you back. Well, that's the Bob translation. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Oh, yes, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Oh, yeah. You're going to be like God. And you know what? You know what the difference between Christianity and all the other religions are? Especially the Eastern religions and the New Age religion? They teach that man can become God. But the Bible teaches that God became man. I mean, that is, in a nutshell, that's the difference between all the other religions and Christianity. And there are those, I mean, if you want to see a, 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 pl a planet full of gods, look at the Mormon church. Every one of them believes that they're going to be a god with their own little planet and their own little wives, and they're going to be get their wives pregnant all the time, and fill up these planets with their children. Well, I feel sorry for that Mormon wife. She's going to be awful busy. Yeah. I don't think so. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And guess what? The first thing Satan did was question God's instructions, his words, and then he lied. So, you know, that's Satan's M.O. Boom. Right there in a nutshell. He's the father of lies. In John 8, 44, Jesus speaking to a certain group of people, and he's not speaking to the Romans, and he's not speaking to the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons, or even the Vatican. No. No. He said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was the murderer from the beginning? Cain. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Huh. So what is the definition of an Antichrist? 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Is there a group of people on the face of this earth that deny that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah? If you don't know who they are, um, well, I suggest you uh, 
start calling around the religious denomination's headquarters and ask them, is Jesus the Christ? And um, when you get to the um, sin of Gog, uh, you could ask the rabbi about Jesus and see what he says. And you'll know what the definition of an antichrist is. And that's the same group that Jesus was speaking to in John 8, 44, if you're, uh, in case you don't know it. Because, uh, well, well, if you skip down to John 8, 48, uh, it'll tell you who he was talking uh, he'll, he'll They will tell you who he's talking to because they were replying to him. So, and I hate to say that word because... I want to keep my channel up as long as possible because you never know when, you know, you never know. I've been on their list for such a long time. I imagine uh, when things go bad, I probably won't be around for, you know, much longer. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've known that my faith in Christ would possibly cost me my life for a long, long time. For over 30 years now, I have known this, believe it or not, almost half my life. So, I always tell pre-tribbers, if you're not willing to die for your faith, become a Buddhist. Why not? You know? But even Buddhists sometimes die for their faith. Southern Thailand uh, is uh, a collection of Buddhists and Muslims. And the Muslims kill Buddhist monks. I mean, you know, I got nothing against Buddhist monks. Uh, you know, for the most part, they're, from what I understand, they're very peaceful people. You know? Why do the Muslims kill them? I, you know, I mean, seriously, they find like, I think it's like every week they find a Buddhist monk dead. Maybe not every week, but, you know, at least every month. And it's like, because uh, I, from what I understand, they, um, when they get, to, when the males get to be a certain age, they honor Buddha by being one of his disciples or whatever for a certain period of time. And they got their little rituals. And, you know, I don't know a lot about it. I've studied virtually every religion quite a bit maybe not you know not extensively but I've covered it the one religion that I know the least about is Islam I mean I'll admit I know very little about Islam but what I do know totally contradicts the Bible so I don't need to know anything else because when I got disillusioned with Christianity and it wasn't that I was disillusioned with Christ. It was the uh, corporate churches, the TV preachers, and what I saw going on in the churches that turned me away from Christ when I was in middle school. That's what turned me against the Bible. Well, it wasn't the Bible, but, you know, corporate, I call it corporate Christianity or churchianity. And then I studied all the other religions. I studied Hinduism, Buddhism. I studied uh, all, uh, virtually all of them. And, uh, you know, if you're, not willing to, if you're not willing to die for your faith in Christ, get out now while you got a chance. Because when, when the time of trouble comes, there's a good possibility you're going to have to answer for your faith with your life. Very, very distinct possibility. Now, when Eve was in the garden talking to the serpent, okay? And like I say, you know, they want you to think it's a snake hanging from a tree with an apple, uh... You know, Satan's got this red suit, 
with a tail and horns and a pitchfork? No. What does the Bible tell you that, what does Satan look like? Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation unto the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And everybody will say, Oh, this is talking about an earthly king from Tyrus. Really? Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Huh. So the king of Tyrus in the days of Ezekiel had been in Eden? That would have made him a thousand years old. And this is, people, this is after the flood. Okay? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the to, uh, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Not born. Created, people. Was the king of Tyrus created? No. The king of Tyrus was born. But this one was sealed up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, had it been in Eden, had all kinds of precious stones for a covering, had tabrets and pipes, was musical, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's a special type of angel, people. This was the anointed cherub that covereth. What did it cover? The throne of God. This anointed cherub covered the throne of God. Did you ever see the mercy seat? The two angels with the wings facing toward each other? One of these was probably Satan himself prior to the fall. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the days, in the ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Satan was created good. And then he decided he wanted God's job. Sorry, sir, but that position's already been filled by the multitude of thy merchandise. They have filled the midst of thee with violence. Of course he filled the midst of thee with violence. There was a war in heaven. They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. You think Eve was talking to a snake? No! Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Eve was probably talking to one of the most beautiful of God's creations. And you wonder why she fell for the lie. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Isn't Satan called an angel of light? Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, therefore will I bring forth a fire. I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth 
in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. In 2 Corinthians 11.14, this is the people that say that Paul is a false apostle. He writes, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Of course, his light is darkness. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. You know, they weren't shooting spitballs at each other and playing around. You know, when there is a war, there are groups trying to kill the other group. Satan tried to kill God. Not a very good game plan. What do you think? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Bingo. Ezekiel 28, 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And in Revelation 20 and verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. You know what brimstone is? Sulfur. Put a match under sulfur. It creates a stinking mess that'll burn your nose. When sulfur mixes with water, it turns into sulfuric acid. Uh, that stuff's even nastier than, that stuff's nasty. I mean, it, it'll dissolve you, bones and all. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. How long is that? Forever and ever. Yeah. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. You know, Eve in the garden was looking at an angel of light, a very beautiful angel of light, Now, concerning Jesus, perhaps Christ in his pre-human form, I don't know if this applies to him or not, perhaps it was him himself that told Eve, stay away from that, you know, tree of good and evil. But what does Isaiah 53 say? Verse 1, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He, who is this talking about? I think Christ. He hath no form nor comeliness, and we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
Do you think that Eve was looking at a creation that was more beautiful than Christ himself? I'm not saying it's true, but I'm saying it's a very distinct possibility. Perhaps that's why she was deceived. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Boy, isn't that the truth? And women too, right? A lot of times. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, not their peace and safety, our peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes... We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justified, I'm sorry, justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Wow, people. I honestly believe that Christ in his prehuman form told this to Eve and when she beheld Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, she probably thought, because it, it even says that the woman was deceived, she probably actually thought the devil was God because he was probably one of the, if not the, most beautiful of all his creations. But here it says, He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 1 Timothy 2.14 Here we go. Paul, the so-called false apostle, and Adam was not deceived. Oh yeah, Adam knew what was going on. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam knew what was going on. But the woman was deceived. I honestly, my opinion, if you don't feel the same way, hey, your opinion is as good as mine. But I think the woman thought that Satan was actually God. That's kind of how I look at it. But, you know, who am I? I'm just some guy that's read the Bible a couple times. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Telling you the doom of Satan prior 
We're studying the method of operation of the devil. Now, deception, lies, that's Satan's method of operation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18, and I'm going to close this out. Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a giant millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpers, trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle, okay, a light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. So there's not going to be any light in this kingdom. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. So the voice of the bridegroom, Christ, and the voice of the bride, the church. You know, think about this, people. The light of the candle, the light of the world, shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom, Christ, and of the bride, the church, shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, the craft, people, that's just the Greek word for craft. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And who is this Babylon? Verse 24 tells you who this Babylon is. If you would just listen to Scripture. And in her was found the blood of prophets. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Who shed the blood of prophets? Why, Stephen Anderson will tell you, oh, well, that's the United States, uh, New York City. Really? When did, when did God the Father send prophets to the United States? Now, I'm not saying there are no prophets in the United States, but where does the Bible say that God sent prophets that were slain in the United States or New York City? Uh, then you've got uh, Wally Shobat. Claims he bombed a bank. But people call the bank, and the bank is like, uh, no, we were never bombed. You know, and they try to trick you into thinking, oh, well, they probably forgot. It was so long ago. You know, if somebody bombed my business, uh, I think, you know, there'd be somebody around or, that would know about it, you know? So the, uh, the newspaper in Jerusalem, not that I believe much of what they say, but uh, they say Wally Shobat is a fraud. Well, he says the Antichrist is going to be a Muslim. So where's the Antichrist going to come from? Where's J Mystery Babylon? Well, some say Mecca. Some say uh, Istanbul. Uh, did God ever send the prophets to uh, Mecca or Istanbul? Well, only if you believe that uh, Muhammad was the prophet. I don't believe that. And then you got, you know, the Vatican. They'll say, oh, yeah, it's Rome. It's the Vatican. Where in the Bible does it say that God sent prophets to Rome? The only prophet that I know that was sent to Rome was Paul. Oh, wait a minute. Paul's a false apostle, they'll tell you. Well, that shoots down that theory. If Paul was a false apostle, then God never sent a prophet to Rome. But you can't show me where Rome killed any of the prophets of God. Didn't happen, people. You know who killed the prophets of God? And where? 
Hey, how about we listen to Jesus? You think we ought to listen to Jesus? You know, this isn't Bob speaketh. No, don't listen to me. You know, God says, uh, somebody writes, let God be true, but every man a liar. And last I checked, I was a man. And every man a liar, well, that, that includes me too. So who killed the prophets? All right, let's go to Luke 13, 33. Jesus speaking, nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of, drumroll, Jerusalem! For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. How about a second witness? Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Wow, if, mass, if, mystery, if Babylon killed the prophets, and Jesus said that Jerusalem killed the prophets, uh, well, you know, when I took algebra in college, if A equals B and B equals C, that means A equals C. If Babylon killed the prophets and it was Jerusalem that killed the prophets, there's only one thing to know. End time Jerusalem is Babylon. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Did God send prophets to New York, USA, Rome, Istanbul, Mecca? No. Jerusalem. Is Jerusalem preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? No, people, they're not. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, empty, nothing. Your house is left unto you desolate. Get the picture? In Revelation 11 and verse 8, talking about the two witnesses, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Oh, wait a minute. Was Jesus crucified in New York or, or in the USA? or Istanbul, or Mecca? Oh, wait a minute. We can say that the Romans killed Jeru uh, Jesus, so they, they can slide little Rome into there. No, Jesus was not crucified in Rome. And he wasn't crucified, you know. Our, Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem. If, if you're if your Messiah was crucified in Rome, uh, be so kind to tell me his name because it's not Jesus. And if you want to blame the Romans for killing Christ, well, look up 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Oh, wait, that's right. Now I know why they don't like Paul. Because Paul tells you who, kills, who killed Jesus, and it wasn't the Romans. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the you-know-whos, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. 70 AD, people, you know what happened? The wrath came upon them to the uttermost. Rome came and destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed the temple, burned it, threw down every stone that was 
up upon another, just like Jesus said in Matthew 24. All right, people, this is the end of part one. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus in his precious name. Amen.